10 tips for castle crushes. Let me know how many of these you didn't know in the comments below, but let's get right into it. Did you know that if you talk to the traveling salesman seen in the barracks, you could get a free health potion? Great for speedrunners who want to save them precious seconds and who doesn't love a free health potion? Did you know that different shops have different prices? You'll want to go to the village swamp store for potions, volcano store for sandwiches and the thief store for bombs. Did you know that you can actually get an animal orb at the very start of the game and know it is an owlet? By heading to the pet nursery, you can see sherbet in the ceiling. Normally you would wait until you have a not magic jump, but you could actually use the melee combo of light light heavy to get one of the cutest pets in the game. Talking of getting things early, you probably know that every playable character has a unique starting weapon, and every weapon in the game has a level requirement. Well did you know that characters using their starting weapon can ignore the level requirement completely? For example, the king's mace is a level 20 weapon, but when playing as the king, you can equip this weapon before hitting level 20. So Lava Ward and Industrial Castle are known as being the hardest levels in the first half of the game, but lucky for you, you can actually skip the final bosses of each level. For Lava World, simply stand at the top of this slope and hold up your shield. Move back and forth until your character stops moving downwards. Carefully move down the slope and head to the third rock spike. Eat a sandwich and as the duration hits 1 second, move forward and up until you reach the golden wheel. Hold up your shield to go back into bounds and pick up the golden wheel. For the industrial machine, stand at the bottom of the screen right before the boss fight. Same thing again, use a sandwich and enter the cutscene at 1 second. Then use a fly combo to make your way over to the golden telescope. But this skip is a lot harder than Narva World. In the marsh level, after defeating the resurrected beefy skeletons, you can actually walk out of the level and then re-enter. This will permanently keep the skeletons dead, even if you return to the map. So if you die anywhere in the marsh, you do not have to redo this fight, especially important for insane mode where you may be dying quite a bit. But let's say you don't want to do the marsh, or the corn boss. Well lucky for you, you can get through Medusa's door without needing the horn. You will need to have a character at level 50 to unlock the divine spin combo. Simply stand at the bottom corner of the door, then do 3 light melee, 1 heavy melee whilst looking away, and the final heavy melee whilst looking at the door. It may take a few tries, but eventually you can skip through the giant door. It turns out that a lot of people struggle on the volleyball game in the sandcastle. The best way to win is to keep your eye on the shadow of the ball, as it will always be where the ball lands. If you also do the combo of a light heavy attack, you can do an uppercut which has great vertical range, making it easier to hit the ball in the air. During the chase scene in the abandoned mill, you will have to jump over logs and fit through doorways to avoid taking damage. The timing on some of these can be slim, but if you keep an eye on the AI deer, you'll see them begin to group together right before a doorway appears. So simply keeping an eye on the deer and following them can make avoiding these walls a lot easier. During the painter boss fight, they will summon paintings to walk into you and damage you. All these paintings will have different health, damage and resistances. So for each painting, here is the most effective way of defeating them. For the unicorn painting, it has no damage resistance against physical damage, but has 50% damage reduction from all elements. So you're going to want to use non-elemental damage or melee. The carrot painting has no resistances, but takes the most damage from fire. The clown painting is unique as it does not have a set amount of health, damage and resistances as it is random every time. So it can't be said what's the most effective since we don't really know. The red painting has no resistances but takes the most damage from electricity. The green painting has no resistances but takes the most damage from poison. The cat painting also has no resistances but takes the most damage from fire. The shaky painting has no resistances but takes the most damage from poison and ice. The octopus painting is resistant to poison and ice damage so avoid these. The elephant has no resistances but takes the most damage from ice. The snail painting is only resistant to physical damage so use elemental damage on this one. And the scissors painting for you PS3 players out there has no resistances but takes the most damage from electricity. And here's a bonus tip, keep an eye on the colour of the painter's paintbrush as it will tell you which painting he's about to make. And that is 10 tips for castle crushers. I have many more tips, so if you guys would like to see 10 more tips for castle crushers, do let me know in the comments below. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.